yeah. You guys like my new shirt? It's a crazy bunny with a chainsaw. This shirt I ordered off that, that Timo, whatever it's called. Piece of shit. Worst material ever bought. It's like plastic. I don't know. Whatever. So, welcome back to another shit show. I mean, welcome back to another Jordy Does. I got a car for pumpkins. On my last video, you guys seen, some of you seen it, Beachcombing, No Life Johnson. I haven't titled it yet, but um, I picked up four pieces of cedar from a buddy that I'm going to do an on-site carving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This uh, cedar was cut down, uh, let's see, what day is today? Wednesday, Thursday. Cut down four days ago, so it's soaking wet. Now, some of you asked, ask, how can you fasten, if you don't have a jaw horse, let me make sure I'm in the camera. If you don't have a jaw horse, how can you fasten your wood carving down? Well, a piece of wood when you want to carve it. So pretend you got a round like this. This cedar, the bark's kind of sappy, so I cut the bottom. I cut the bottom flat already. So here's an example. Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those days. I got to carve four of these pumpkins, and uh, I got to finish trees. I got to finish a bunch of trees I got here. I'm not going to film too much carving these pumpkins. I got enough of those videos out. But so, so this is the bottom right here where I'm tapping. That's the bottom. All you do is you get a piece of old plywood. This could even go for trees too. Put some deck screws in here. Make sure not to screw them too close to the edge because you don't want to hit the screw with your chainsaw. So that's that. Now all you do is say you don't have one of these hydraulic lifts and you just got a, another stump, right? So all you do is just flip this over. Oh man, all the sap in here. My hands are going to be black by the end of the day. Now all you do is just flip that over and pretend like I said you got a stump or a work table or whatever you you want to do you just screw it down to that this screws too long this one's not so again one more screw screw it on the other side stand by I'll press pause so here's the cheap deck screw just screw it down to your thing Look at that! Good to go, ready to carve a pumpkin. So let me get the let me get everything uh, back to normal here. I'm going to turn the camera back this way, and then uh, some of you ask how you know like all different types of trees have different types of barks. This cedar bark comes off pretty easy. Actually, this one comes off really easy. I'll just let's go. What? I'll just stop where I think is good to uh, talk about. But let me get my pry bar and hammer. Some of you want to know, some of you ask how to get bark bark off, but some of it doesn't come off this easy. But I just got like a sledgehammer like this. I mean a pry bar like this. And then uh, just get it between the bark and the wood. Kind of rip it off in strips here. It's sometimes a bitch. Okay, you get it going. Just 
So there, you see how it comes off in strips? And then you just keep on going around the piece. Yeah, I should have told Buddy to get the bark off before he I pick up the pumpkins. But anyways, so I'll get the bark off this. I don't want to carve any more pumpkins. I'm sick of them. So sick of them. Sick of carving trees too. I gotta finish these trees. Anyways, stand by. Okay, so here's a still MSA 170. This is your cheapest still. This is your cheapest still chainsaw. And it just has a normal bar. This bar came with the saw when I bought it. So I'm going to start off with this saw. Basically, you can carve a pumpkin with this saw. And you could draw your face on or Dremel carve your face on if you want. But before I go on, it's very good to be safe when you're chainsaw carving. The thing will friggin' cut your leg off. I hate to say it, but it will. Um, wear your chops. These are chops. Chainsaw cut proof. Uh, steel toe boots. Um, if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. Look at all that sap on there. I don't wear gloves because I get a better grip of the chainsaw when I've got my hands on it. Um, eye protection and ear protection. So this, um, this is not a tutorial how to carve pumpkins or trees. But when I carve this pumpkin in here, let's see, um, get a pen. I, you see how un, un, flat the top is? It doesn't matter, right? As long as your bottom is somewhat flat. So I go like this, this. This is going to be your center right here. Sorry. Like I do a cut here, then I cut here, then I cut here, then I cut here, and then we'll get this center to pop out, and you got your little pumpkin stalk there. Now, the deeper that you cut down here, the bigger of a stalk you can have. So I don't draw these on, but I cut it, right? So you'll see me cut it like this. Then I go over here with my saw, boom, and I block this whole piece out. This whole piece will fly off. Right here, off. Then I do the same thing here. I cut it here. Then I go like this with my saw, and I block this off. And then you got these little nubs here that you just cut in this way, and boom, it will pop off, right? And sometimes when you do these cuts here, they don't turn out like the sides aren't, one side's higher and the other side's lower. Who cares? It's a pumpkin. Nothing's shaped perfectly. And um, you just smooth it out over top with your saw. So let me get the uh, saw hooked up and I'll show you guys uh, what's going on. Okay, so you guys are going to see me cut here. Then cut here. This whole piece will fly off. I'll do the same thing on the back. This piece will fly off. I'll get a couple nubs here. This piece will fly off. Then you'll see me go around like this to round the pumpkin edge. Give it uh, 45. And you'll see me do it on the bottom too. The saw just going like this. Cut it, making it somewhat round. Uh. Here goes my microphone. There goes my microphone. Piece of shit. The shirt is like a such a hunk of shit. It's like plastic. What's going on here?
that's where I was talking about. I'll zoom in here. You get the little ledge here. It's not cut smooth. That's okay. Just cut, make it smooth with your saw. Now I'm going to go around and 45 all these edges on the top and the bottom. I might as well clean up. You know, to get rid of the bark, if you're good with the saw, you can always uh, cut the bark off. set just like that okay so there's the shape of our pumpkin now you can decide where you want to draw the face on then you got your pumpkin lines down here um, let's get this uh, jack stand up a bit higher it's with the hydraulic you got a foot pedal here and it raises the table But there's this is nothing to it. This these pumpkins, I'm telling you right now, they're huge sellers, and they're so good for the beginning carvers to learn how to use your saw properly and stuff like that. But for the very beginners, like I said, be safety, be safe, have your chaps on, because the day that you don't wear your chaps is the day you'll slip and uh, you'll get a cut. So where's that pen here? So now I decide where I want to put the face. I always look for the widest part of the pumpkin, so this would be the widest. But you got some stuff here going on. I cut the, <coughs> excuse me, kick these out of the way because these are ankle busters. So we got a good side here. So, well I cut the thing in so it's like a janitor lantern, pretend you can pop this off. So I cut all the way around there. So let's give you a better wider angle. So boom. This wood's so wet. 
and then boom. Then our face can go here. Okay? And then so you got those. I don't know, I call them pumpkin bum bum crack lines. So you got one there. I don't do that many. The more you do, the cooler it will look. But uh so now I cut in here just like that thick. I cut well you can do you can go like boom, boom, two bevel cuts, but all I do is one cut down the center, I bevel this side off, then I bevel this side off. I can't even sand this wood, it's so wet. So I got it, it's the, these are really rustic looking pumpkins, right? Like there's gonna be chainsaw marks all over them. No, I'm not gonna bore you um, carving these pumpkins anymore. But there's the basics, how to do it. Maybe I'll do this one cut here, cut it down here, bevel it, bevel it, round the tops off, and you guys can kind of see how I do it. And I'll do it with this, like I said, you could do it with the uh, 170 with a stock bar, but just use, use this part of the bar when you're doing thin cuts. Use right down here. Right there, this bottom part. Don't use up here. Don't use this part. Because if you use up here, you're going to get kickback. But if you use down here, you're going to be safe. And just just be safe. That's all. I don't want anybody to get hurt on my, uh, on my, my time or whatever, my videos. God damn piece of shit! Ha <laughs> ha piece of shit ha huh? piece of shit ha! Huh? Now if this wood was dry you could just burn this 
You don't need to paint it. Save your money. Do down your lines. Do the top top thing here, the jackal lantern. Okay. Put this cap on the other can. I'll just uh, burn it a bit to speed up the paint. Sink filming. Speed up the drying of the paint. Yeah, this might be the shortest Jordy does video on this stuff. Maybe I should just take a break. So I'll put this one off to the side. Okay, I'll put this one off to the side now. Put another, like, I'll uh, let it dry a bit. Then I'll get, uh, I might use my, uh, the cuts all shaping this to get the paint off the face, but this isn't. That's about. This is about as sanded as I want to get the pumpkin. Like I'll clean up the face with that uh, cuts all shaping disc, and then uh, get all the paint off it. Then I'll paint it orange. Oh yeah, what's going on here? So all you do is just unscrew everything. You know you have those days where it's just one of those days? You ever hear, hear that Lem Biscuit song? Just one of those days! Well, so you probably don't even know who Limp Biscuit is. Look there. Look at this. This wood's so wet, the paint just wipes right off. So there's one out of 5,000. Um, I'll get the other ones done and see if we can move on to uh, curve and couple trees. <laughs> So I don't know if that was in video, but I'll just spin it around once more. So like once again, I'll clean up all this face, get rid of all the paint off the face. Paint it orange. Then I'll, uh, some people like the natural color of the wood too. And I'll paint this uh, green. So let's get this out of the way. And, uh, oh yeah, take a break. First of all. This is what happens. I say, I say, Jordy, take a break. Then I start saying, no, no, I'll do this first. Do this, that first. And then uh, I don't even end up taking a break. And, you know, that's the time where you could get hurt. Right. This this wood's so heavy. I don't even need to screw this board down. It's not going to remove. It's not going to move around that much. But there you go. You're set up to carve another pumpkin. Jordy does. Jordy does. If I don't see another pumpkin after I'm finished carving this one for 20 years, I just don't care.
Curve Fusion time lapse coming up. Curve Fusion time lapse coming up. Okay, so the last pumpkin is done. This wood is soaking wet. You can't get any wetter wood. Especially when you got the uh, sapwood still on there too. That's more wet than the hardwood. Um, this is the cuts all shaping disc on a grinder. This is very dangerous. It's a very aggressive tool and it kicks can kick back like crazy. And this will remove skin. Now, this wood is so wet. This is just, it's the silver one, this one. So it come, these discs come in different aggressives, like the, the gold, the silver, then the black, which is the most extreme, and the gold's the finest, silver's the, the middle of the boat. If it's just like the burrs, if I use this on this pumpkin, well, I don't turn on my dust mask on. Make sure you keep your shields on. There's no shield on this. This will plug up. There, you can already see it's plugging up already because it's wet wood. So instead of doing that, you definitely can't use sandpaper all I'm going to do is get my little uh, Echo 2511 with the 8-inch carving bar on here. You can use your normal bar. You don't have to have a carving bar. And use the top of the chain to clean up the paint. thing still filming so there okay blow it out now you might get some chips on there you can burn those out there that's soaking wet wood now let's get the uh, let's get this off this mount here and um, well yeah, we'll get it off the mountain. We'll spray it orange. Since this is a Jordy's does video, might as well uh, keep filming. Where's that? Oh, there's only one screw on this one. So that took me, I don't know, a couple hours to do. Some pump four pumpkins while filming. Filming really slows down a lot. A lot. So there's that. Now, the thing with this paint is this is the Rust Olam Orange. Okay. 
this paint sprayed on here will be wet. But usually what I do is I don't have any. I don't have any here. I spray it with this. Then I spray it with the clear coat. And the clear coat locks it in. It, it dries everything on top of the wet wood. These are just like they're just chainsaw carved pumpkins man like how good do you want them to be you can spend a long time on your pumpkins but if me i would much rather spend a long time on something else So there you go, it's done. Now I'll put it aside so no more sawdust. Now sometimes you might get some orange in the eye. It's okay. Let's get your black. Hit it again. There you go. Put it outside from the sun to dry. So I'll do this with the other ones. Then we'll move on to trees. I swear on my mother's name if i ever have to carve another pumpkin i'm gonna just end it because i've had enough pumpkins that's for sure so i gotta get some clear coat hopefully it doesn't rain and uh clear coat them they'll, they'll be good for you don't have to carve a pumpkin if you got one of these you just put this out in your front patio and there you go you put it front lawn thank god those are over I mean it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So now we got to, I got to have a sip of coffee. I'm almost out of coffee, actually. And lower this table. You should see the mess I got here again. I just cleaned it up yesterday. After beach combing. What is that metal thing down there? Well, I don't know why it's not lowering all the way. I really don't care right now. I gotta put this back here. Is that metal thing in there? It's stuck in there. Oh, it's all plugged up with sawdust, that's why. Now, all I'm going to do is talk about sanding the trees today. Actually, I made a post in the in uh, on YouTube asking if anybody I made a post yesterday on YouTube in the community section asking saying I'm going to carve pumpkins and trees today. Is there anything that anybody wants me to show how I do it? Somebody said, a couple people responded, uh, cheeks and eyes and nose with wood spirits. Somebody said uh, they can't seem to get the undercuts with the tree. So first of all, we'll do, I'll do, I'll sand the trees. There's a bunch of different ways you can do sanding. I'm going to show you guys. And then we'll... I got some trees cut there, already shaped. Then we'll just cut the branches in and put some hearts on them. I'm gonna. Oh, I've been carving hearts on the trees this year, because you got to mix it up. You know, somebody has a tree from last year. Well, they don't have a heart on their tree this year, so they might need one with the heart. You know how ladies are. Not all of the ladies, but some. I remember. Years back, there's no way we'd carve a heart here at Carving Fusion. No, it was, it was kind of a joke. Am I on camera? Okay, so. See? Look at that big pile of muss. Might not look like much on camera, but it is a big pile of mess. Look at. Oh, man. 
So I want to get all these trees sanded. There's some trees. There's the ones that need to be carved in the back. There's one with the heart lying on its side right there. So let me have a little break here and we'll just, uh, well, let's see. Oh, oh, right in the shin. Okay, break time. I need to have a break. Got it in the shin. So, I got the tree up here. It's just been burnt, hasn't been sanded. I'm going to go home. I see that uh, something from Amazon showed up at my doorstep, and I got to go to the washroom. I do have my uh, camping toilet. I've already used it this morning, like shit in a bucket. Anyway, sorry. Um, I'm going to go home, and then we'll talk about different ways you can sand. You know, you got that. You got a sandal flex here. I just got a refill. So I'm going to. Um, the sandal flex the most expensive way to sand. Because I don't think the refills last too long. But there's other ways to do it. You can use, um, let's just wait till I get back. And um, stand by. I'm going to get another coffee too. Because another coffee, it's still early in the morning. Another coffee might uh, motivate me to finish curving all those trees. <laughs> Look at them all there back there, those square blocks. Okay, so welcome to my workbench. Um, I just got back from home. I went home, I uh, was sitting on the throne checking my emails and stuff like that, and I got an email from a subscriber, and he's a fellow learning chainsaw carver, and he said he watched my last Jordy Dust video, and he's really concerned that um, I was going to hit myself with my chainsaw bar when I was doing the upcuts. Now, I replied to him, I says, I know, I know what I was doing. But thank you for the looking out for me because it sends a friendly reminder that chainsaws are very, very dangerous. And if you get cut by, you get hit by a chainsaw, you're going to the hospital. That's the bottom line. You're going to the friggin' hospital. You get hit with any of this stuff or like a cut saw burr, you're going to get a little cut on your skin. You're not going to the hospital. But you get the chainsaw, you're going to go to the hospital. Now, Carving bars are a lot safer than stock bars. So when I was using the stock bar to carve those pumpkins, yeah, I got a little bit of experience now, but not that much. It's only been like four or five years since I've been doing it. I've run chainsaws my whole life, but not like this. So the friend that sent me the email, thank you for that email. It just sends me a friendly reminder. Um, to be safe. Carving bars have less chance of kickback. That's just the bottom line. You'll still get kickback with them. But I'm passing the message along to everybody else. Just be safe and watch videos with how to run chainsaws and how to avoid kickback and all that stuff. You know, because even though I think I know how to avoid the kickback, it can happen like that, when you don't expect it. That's why I had my chaps on earlier. My chaps are off, and I had my steel toe boots on earlier. Now I changed my uh, lighter shoes, and I took my chaps off because I don't think I'm going to do any more carving. So let's go on to the sanding. So this is like, uh, you can get stuff like this. You just uh, type in quarter-inch sanding wheels. This is on Amazon. You see there's a bunch of different little things in here. This is fairly cheap, but I, I don't know how good this is. I know Lee Valley sells them and they're bigger, but uh, I just got this just to test out. You can get things like this. So like there's Scotch Brite in there. Then there's sanding pads in there. 
I haven't really used this too much on chainsaw carving. Um, this is, I've been using this, this uh, Scotch Bright on a ready rod. And you put a, a nut and a washer on the back. I glued that nut down. You can double the nut, but it, they'll still thread down. And then you got a nut in the washer on the front. And um, this is where it goes in the drill. I just, I, like you'll see here, there's no threads. The drill wore that away. I don't do that. I put it in with the threads, and slowly the drill will take those threads away. So there's that. This is great for show Susie band, but it also does sand wood. But it takes a lot of work. Now this one on the drill, this is all for drill, of course. Now this is the drill I use. I don't know, it's just a Makita. The fastest drill I could find online. I couldn't find this. This is the DWD-115. There's probably faster ones. But this is a ready rod with the PVC pipe. So you hold on to this when it's spinning. And this is just a belt sander. Um, cut up. You flip a couple. You flip it around. Like see how I got that one backwards on the back. I got a couple backwards. And I got this one on here. The front. So I put like seven over eight on eight of them on here. That's pretty worn out. Now the one that um, Ryan Cook uses. This is the Sando Flex. Okay. Now here's here it is, quarter inch. Um, this one is this the bent one that I got? Yeah, right. Yeah, this one's bent. I think this is the bent one. Anyways. These refills are not cheap. They're like, I don't know. They're like 20 bucks now or something. So I normally use that, make my own sander. But since I got this, I'm going to use this today to do the sanding. So I'm going to refill it. You uh, undo this nut here, and then you put this. I'm not going to show how to do it because I get frustrated and I'll be screaming and yelling. But yeah, so... You got a bunch of little flappers that sanders that come off there and then you got the backers in here too this one might be the one because ryan cook did give me an old one this might be the one that he gave me see that shaft's bent anyways this is what we're going to use on the drill oh one other thing so i just put this one on here for reference this is the extender that uh, ryan cook uses he got his from uh well, actually, I got him his last one that he has. But, uh, Bob King in America sells these. I had to order two of them, one for me, one for Ryan, um, to my friend in the States because Bob doesn't ship to um, Canada. I think he just works inside the States. I'm not too sure, but Bob King. I don't know what his um, carving thing is. but um, So this, you just hold on to this, and it spins. You put it in your drill. So you got an extender, right? And this chuck, it's plastic, but, you know, it's it, it fits the bigger size ones too. So that's this. That's what I'll be using today too with uh, the Sando Flex. Also, I won't be talking that much because I'll have my trend. This I love this helmet, Air Pro. This is in my Amazon store listed below. Um, this has filters in it. Okay, so let's see here. So in there's the filters, one, two. It's got an on-off switch. It's rechargeable batteries, and it's like a hard hat. But you can have a beard um, when, you, when, you, when you're carving with this because it pushes air in from these filters, okay? Now, I don't know what there's the other one um, that Ryan Cook has. What's it called? This is the air, air shield. The other one is the power cap. I don't know. I'm not paying the shipping to get the power cap here in Canada. So this is not this is not a cheap helmet. It's like probably six hundred bucks now, but it's friggin' awesome and it doesn't fog up because it pushes air in when you're carving or sanding. So um, you know if you can afford it, I would suggest suggest to get one of these. Um, it just it's so good for the dust. But like I said, it's not cheap. Okay, so I got the first unsanded tree on this uh, jaw horse. I got the Sando Flex hooked up. I'm going to do one tree with the Sando Flex, another tree with this cheap uh, Amazon thing, 
all the set different sounding things on here and then um, one with this I'm not going to use the one that um, with the sanding disc, the sanding things, and you cut them up. Sanding belts, because well, I don't want to cut one up. Okay, I'm going to put my uh, mask on. See, it doesn't fog up. I dropped my microphone! Okay, so they all have they all have their own advantages. Um, I think this one was Sandoflex. 
Um, the Sando Flex was the not sure. The Sando Flex was the funnest to use, but you see the other cheaper ones work too. Like even look at this one. So, I think like um. If you can afford to get them all, get them all. Because then you have different ways to uh, sand different things. I think I, I, I like them all. For the trees anyways. Now. Let's see here. Yeah, I think they're all, I think they're all good. This, um, I, this is a set. I got a whole bunch of these in this set. You could just, uh, I'll try and put a link to my, to Amazon to get this set. Like I got like 15 of these. Hold on a second here. See, I got like, some have the sandpaper, some don't. This one doesn't have the sandpaper, but like there's smaller ones, different size ones. And, uh, like even real small ones to put in your Fordham. Or you're, you can even use this and, and tight to get to spaces. But there's like probably 20 different ones in this set. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. I'll find a link and I'll put it underneath this video. I'm, I think these are pretty good actually. But don't don't uh, don't listen to me. So now let's uh, let's get one of these trees here on the jaw horse okay I already got the sto the trunk carved in yeah my jaw horse is a piece of shit okay so there's a bunch of different things we can do um you know, this one has the face on it. This one here has the heart on Oh, just busted the top right off of it. This one has the heart on Oh, fuck. That's what, pardon my language, this one has the heart on it there. Um, let's do one with the heart on it. So, I don't even know if I should be filming today. Let me get these trees out of the way here. So you got basically when you got something like this, you got a center line. It's this windy day tree. This pen's a piece of crap. So I was using it on the wet wood. So let's put a heart on this one. Kind of sideways going like that. So now, how can I explain this? Now here's the person for the person that was asking about the undercuts. You guys see that heart there? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my saw and I'm gonna cut around this heart, okay? And then I'm gonna remove the wood behind it to make the heart elevated. So, the first branch, can we see this? The first branch, you know, you could do it like this down here, but you can see, you can see the undercut when you do it on this side. I'm making it complicated, I know. So I go like this. That's the first, that's one whole branch right here, the top of the tree is blowing. So I cut underneath here. Now I'm doing my trees a little bit different this year. I'm putting a branch in the middle too. So it gets a little bit more tricky to explain. So there's my top branch blowing in the wind. Just that's going to be one whole branch up here. Then I'm going to do an undercut here, right? Then I'm going to remove the wood underneath it. You know, when I do my trees, the more that you dig in with that bar, and get underneath each branch 
and undercut and get the tip of the bar in there, but be safe. And just, like, don't hold your saw straight to it. Tilt it. Pretend this is my saw and this is my bar, okay? Like, tilt your saw and get, uh, tilt it as much as you can and get underneath that branch. So there's another branch coming here. And then this one will, uh, let's see here. Okay, so our center branch right here. The one coming off the center branch. Then there's another center branch. One coming off the center branch. One coming off the center branch. And another center branch. One coming off the center branch. One coming off the center branch. Then, and make them bigger as you go down. Right? So center branch. One coming off the center branch. One coming off the center branch. Just like fish scales or dragon scales. And that will just be like that. And that. We'll figure out that bottom. So what I'm going to do first is carve that heart out. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfectly shaped heart. It's a Christmas tree chainsaw carving. So stand by and we'll cut it out. Sorry, I don't know if you guys were able to see the top branch of the video. But you see here? Here it is right here. Whoosh. One branch. This is one branch all the way up here. Then you undercut it all the way around. So I'm just going to finish finish my little break. And um, we'll get carving it. Oh yeah, first I got to do the heart. Yeah, I'm going to be smoking. Even with these carving bars. Try not to use the top of the tip. Use the bottom quarter bit of the tip right here. Let me put my cigarette out. You know, because kickback so dangerous. Use this part of the tip right there where that pen is. Try not to use, until you really know the saw, try not to use the top part of the tip. You can use it, but I suggest really getting to know the saw first. And and also, when I'm cutting, when I'm cutting here, I stand out of the way. So my if this thing kicks back, it's going to miss my face. If it hits my shoulder, it hits my shoulder. You know, I don't need any more scars on this face. So, now, let's curve the heart. Stand by, I got an itchy nose. So there's a hundred. 
undercut. Here's an undercut. Oh, I gotta turn my saw. So there's an the undercut, okay? So now I got the undercut, but now I'm gonna come in there and bevel that undercut away. I'm going to quickly carve some, I could do more undercut right here. I'm going to quickly carve some lines up here, some branch lines. Now, I'm always using the side of my bar. Like, I'm not using it straight like this. I'm always, like for this side, I'll come over and I'll use this. I'll use this side of the bar. Then this side, when I'm doing this, I'll stand here and I'll use this side of the bar and I'll scrape it with the side. All right. Okay, so there all my cuts are in. Sorry, you guys didn't see down below. All my cuts are in. Now I'm going to bevel those cuts out because I cut straight in. Now is what I'm going to really dig. I'm going to, so this is a square edge right here, right? And he's got a straight cut in there. But now I'm going to go in there and really bevel and dig the bar up underneath this branch. Same with uh, on the side here. So when I take this off, right, you can see here I cut straight in, almost straight. But then, now, I'm going to really slope it and dig the bar up under there. Let me just do this one here because it's big, for example. So, like fist scales. <laughs> those up cuts like I did because that's when you can get kicked back but I always watch it right so when this is up cutting like this I always make sure that if it wants to kick it will catch on this little piece and slow it down right there okay so like I said it's a bit trickier when you got the middle branch because now I have this cut I need to take this down again I need to taper this now I need to taper this this branch underneath this branch uh, this this is kind of like I'm a little bit confusing to explain. I hope you guys are following with along. Okay, so now you're going to see me go like this, slope it, and get rid of this square line here, and make it look like these branches are tucked underneath this one. And I'll do it down here, down, down. Let's see if this whole thing's on camera. Well, most of it is. 
This is a quarter tip or uh, loony tip. It's nice to be able to get the carving bar under here when you're carving, right? So try and you got to be so careful for kickback. See, the more you get that bar, I still got lots of touching up to do. The more you undercut under here, the better you can get your bar to make it looks like it's not starting there, right? Like I'm rushing this one, but it doesn't really matter. Well, it does, but it doesn't, but it does, but it does. does. <laughs> undercut it like here for example I'm gonna have to finish this off the jaw horse and I'll finish it off camera but like here I can see if you look straight at it I can see those cuts stop there but so now I want to try and figure out how I'm gonna get my bar up in there so this is up cut and I suggest for the very beginners don't do this but I gotta go like this and push it up and under. Right? See how that kind of did that? Got up under there. Well, I gotta finish this uh, off camera. But um, yeah, 
Anyways, carry on. So there you go. The more, this was a bad example. I shouldn't even add this part to the video because this heart with these middle branches was kind of hard to do in there. Don't be afraid to pull your die grinder and clean everything up. That's what I did in here. It's kind of made it look like a hot mess. You know, let's, um, I'll, I'll sound this heart better. And um, that's it. You know, like undercuts, get in there deep. With that bar, get in there, and sometimes you got to move it around different ways to get it in there. But always remember the kickback. Always. Man, my nose is itchy. It's all this cedar. So I'm going to sound this. I think the uh, buddy's coming to pick up his pumpkins, the sun. And uh, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm going to sand these trees, and that might be it. I think that's going to be it. Anyways, okay, well, supposedly I'm not done yet. So, like, here's your angle grinder with a, like, 36 grit sanding disc on here. You can hit the branches with the, um, with this, too. Let me just clean up this heart for a second. I'm going to hold my breath. If you want to get the real highlights out to pop, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna quickly uh, sound the rest of these trees. Shit! There's the windy day British West Coast tree. Yep, this is a simple tree. Just get your bar and bop, 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 bop. So there's your really basic wood spirit tree. Got some green paint, kind of give it some green on there. Not much, just a little bit. I always get carried away. Anyways. We got some lighter green here. Man, these cans just friggin'. That's enough. Okay, so maybe I should try and finish off this bear tomorrow or something. Oh, um, like I said on my lot, one of my last videos, I want to get this big cedar log, one of these big cedar logs, into the tent. But uh, it's been a pretty good day. Here's those pumpkins. It's still early, but it, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm a little bit tired today. I got all the trees sounded. Excuse me. Got a big pile of mess. Chainsaw carving's hard work. Here's that guy. You know, you can get some white, put some white on the little bit of white on the tips to make it look like a Christmas tree. There's the ones with the hearts. Here's the one that I did live. See the middle branches? One, two, three. But it kind of, that heart kind of put a. Um weird thing into it made it kind of tricky it's not the best but you got one like that where you can put the tree on the trunk this is that uh, this is that uh, poplar tree that I carved soaking wet poplar anyways Man, I thought I was going to get these, uh, I thought I thought that I was going to get everything carved today, but um, filming slows you down. So tomorrow I'll just be at it here carving trees with hearts on it. That's the bottom line, son.
Hope everybody's good. Got to wrap up. Wait for Buddy to show up. Pick up his pumpkins. Tell him to put a clear coat on them. And have a good day.